I bless your name. I bless your name. I give you honor. I give you praise. You
mercy of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of I really feel directed to give Papa Slack honor today. How we love that man. And we actually had the privilege of preaching for him, ministering for him a couple of times. And what a beautiful foundation was left here. And some of you remember him. If you didn't get a chance to know him, wow, you missed it because that guy was something else. We really, really love Papa Slack. So we give him honor. And because of that, look what God is building here. <laughs> look what God is doing here. And I know it's been said before, but, but Pentecostals of Sydney, your best days are still ahead. The greatest miracles God's ever performed are still in front of you. The greatest deliverances are still in front of you. The greatest miracles that God has ever performed in your life is still ahead of you. So the sky is the limit, and all things are possible. Oh, how, how I love our God, because he's the God that makes all things possible. I'm going to switch up. This morning, uh, in the first session, I did questions for God. Now I'm going to do miracles never look like miracles. Miracles never look like miracles. Remember when God was calling Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage? And he was there at that burning bush, and God was calling him. And human nature wants to cop out from responsibility. So what did he tell God when God's commissioning him? He said, I, I, I can't do this. I'm the wrong one. And then God said to him, what is in your hand? And he said, well, it's a staff, Lord. And then God said, cast it on the ground. And when he cast it on the ground, it became a snake. Now, this is evidence that God is with him, Moses, by this rod turning into a snake. It, it's a miracle. But, but what does the scripture say that Moses did? The scripture said he ran from it. And God said, no, that's not going to work. 
God said, reach out and take it by the tail. And when he did, remember, it then became a staff again. God called me to the San Francisco Bay Area. I did not want to go. I was running from the call. This little church in Menlo Park opened up right by Stanford University, and they had, they had called me, and they, they wanted me to come preach for them. And so I, I did. I went and preached, and they said, we want you to become our pastor. I said, sorry, but I don't want it. Mighty man of God, mighty faith. Yeah, can't do it, right? Can't do it. And I'll never forget the elder. There was only eight people. And the elder of the church followed me out to the parking lot in tears. He had tears on his cheek, and he said, God told me you're the man. I said, elder, I respect you so much, but I just don't feel that it's right for me. So we'd been evangelizing 10 years at that time, traveled coast to coast, all over the United States, all over, all over the world. And we were kind of getting ready to settle down because we had bought a little house in Tulare, California. And so I, I, I went back to that little house after preaching there and after denying these wonderful people the will of God, I went back and I was working in my garden. I, I love to grow things. So I, I, still have, I still have 45 vintage antique rose bushes that I love. I, I, I love roses. And, and so I was working in my little garden there in Tulare, and I heard this voice. And it was like this, do you love me? It was loud. And I thought someone was over the fence because there was a field over the fence. And, and I looked, and there was no one there. And I said, oh, this is scary. I said, yes, Lord. You know that I love, me, love you. Then he said, I'll never, and I've heard the audible voice of God twice in my life. This is the first time I heard it. And, and then he said, if, he put emphasis, if, if you love me, take my church in Menlo Park. God's calling me. I went in, I told my wife, she was in the kitchen, she loves to cook, she was in the kitchen. I said, honey, God has just spoke and we have to take that church in Menlo Park. My wife cried and hit her knees and said, my God, no. I said, honey, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's, it's, it's a call. It's the God thing. I, I, God is calling us. So I went and I preached for them, and they voted. I only got out of the eight members, I only got six yeses and two noes. Great man of faith. I called Jim Shoemake, who is my presbyter. I said, Jim, I, I just, I, I, I can't do it because I didn't get a full vote. <laughs> Jim Shoemake always talked to me real straight. He said, suck it up, son. It's the will of God. <laughs> so we did. But you know, the only question the board asked me, will you be full time? full-time in the San Francisco Bay Area, the most expensive area for real estate in the world, and this little eight people are saying, we want you to be full-time. <laughs> how much comes in? You know, great man of faith, great how much comes in? $150 a week. I already looked at a home, and back then, that home was going to cost me $1,200 a month for payments. And I did the math real quick, and I said, I'm not even going to make the house payment. But then, but then, when I said, God, how can I make it? God said, I will take care of you. <laughs> miracles never look like miracles. They only look like a small church with no money. <laughs> we took it. And yes, we went full time because God told me, and he put a number in my, in my head. He said, your income will never go below this figure. I said, God, wow, thanks, Lord. And it never did. It was a miracle, a miracle. We started teaching home Bible studies. If you guys are not teaching home Bible, I know you had Simeon Costa recently, the Bible study king, right? And I love, I love Simeon. He's a great guy. And, and I, 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 I do, I, I, I share the same message. You must teach home Bible studies. 
No, no, that was weak. You must teach home Bible studies. Okay. Why? Because that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where it gets fun. That's when it really gets exciting. When God uses you and you say, I, I don't have the ability or talent. You don't need to have talent or ability. You got the God of the universe behind you. You don't need talent. All you need to do is teach God's word and God will bless you because you do that. So I started teaching Bible studies to this guy and one him. He came to the church and his job was he was a demolition guy. He would drive a big 18-wheeler and they would demolish buildings in San Francisco and they were demolishing these big buildings and, and his job was to drive the debris to the, to the dump. So he's driving debris to the dump and God speaks to him at the very gate before he went in he said to him, stop, pull over, and dig in your truck. Dig in my truck. I'm supposed to dump this debris. Dig in the truck. Dig in the truck. He gets down on all fours because he said, I'm going to do it like a dog. And he's digging in the debris in the back of his truck. And the third handful, silver dollars, American silver dollars, started falling between his fingers. He said, oh, God, I get it. Yeah, dig in my truck. <laughs> Ten thousand dollars dollars in silver because the safe had broken open in the back of his truck and now if it goes into the dump it becomes dump property but he's on the outside of the dump now it's free for all <laughs> he filled up two backpacks brought them home to his wife dropped one at her feet they were living in it breaks my heart they were living in poverty they had blow up furniture and he dumps one of these, drops it at his wife's feet, and it breaks open, and, and silver dollars spill out. She says, oh, my God, we're rich. <laughs> and he says, no, no, no. God said, my pastor needs a new roof on his building. My pastor needs his building painted, and we're taking the money to church. Thursday night, 10 people in a Thursday night service, two ushers stand up there, and this guy brings two backpacks and drops one in each plate. The ushers almost hit their knees. Why? Because a pastor said, I will be full time on $150 a week. And so what does God do? God brings in the resources. What are you going through right now? You tell me it looks like a great problem. It's a difficulty. God is going to use that difficulty to turn it into a miracle. Why? Because miracles never look like miracles. They only look like problems and difficulties. Stop saying how rough you have it in your problem. Start thanking God for the problem that you're in because God is going to do a miracle. God proved himself faithful. Miracle after miracle. God provided for us. We actually sold that building and made a profit, and we bought another building in the Bay Area, and it was all because we said, God, we will do your will because this just looks like a problem. See, I had one of my mentors when I went and tried out for that little church. One of my mentors said, don't touch it with a 10-foot pole. They're problems. Great faith. Don't think that church, they're just full of devils. How, hallelujah. <laughs> you know, what's interesting about that sixth vote is I had two that were mentally challenged. I mean, severely mentally challenged. They voted yes. <laughs> My Lord, God will take care of you. See, what you're saying right now is how am I going to get through this problem? Start thanking God for the problem. Start thanking him for the difficulty that you're in. Because miracles never look like miracles. They only look like snakes. Reach out. Grab it. Take it by the heels. Sister Nanny Bones, come on. 
you know he wrote a book? It's for sale. Did you tell him? So you, have, you need to get it. It's fabulous. Or buy it for your husband. I don't know. So when I was about 10 years old, I was in the hallway of my home, and I was listening to my mother in deep intercession and travail. Now, those of you that are not familiar with that, let me just tell you. It really could be a, an epistemological shift in your life if you are standing in the hallway at 11 years old and you hear your mother praying like that. You really think either I'm getting ready to die or we're all going to heaven. There's no in between. And when my mom came out of her bedroom, I said, Mama, are you okay? And her face was so swollen, she'd been weeping, travailing for over an hour, eyes almost swollen shut. And she said, oh, nanny, God just spoke to me and told me I'm going to minister to thousands. I'm going to sing. She was a worship leader for over 58 years in our church. But when she said that, I'm going to tell you my family. I thought maybe she had lost it a little bit in that prayer meeting. Because we only had 20 people in our church. And I did not know how mother was going to minister to thousands. But I dare not say anything to refute what she had just said from God. So I just remember shaking my head. Okay. Fast forward, in 2020, mother fell, broke her hip, and died six days later. She was living with us. We loved serving her. She, Richard M. brought her breakfast every morning on a gold tray with everything she loved and flowers. He loved mother and served my mother with honor. And so when she was passing... I had some dear friends. Maya Hunley was there from the Middle East. Maya Hunley was there, and I had Carol Green, another friend. And they were on each side of my mother, holding her hands as she was passing over. And in that moment, this little 91-pound mother of mine was laying on her deathbed, leading her last Sunday morning worship service. I'm pretty sure she thought she was back in church leading this worship. So as she's leading these songs that I'd heard all of my life, uh, she, let's see, what was, what was one of them? Um, it slips my mind and I'm almost 72, so that's okay with me. <laughs> my hope is built on nothing less. Than Jesus and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And she went right from one song to another. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There, and we were honestly astounded at the strength of this tiny woman to be singing these worship songs as she's crossing over. So I got my camera and I just did a little clip of Mother leading her last Sunday morning worship set. And the day before her funeral, it was COVID, so we had her funeral in our home. And we put her casket in the room where she had lived. It was like an old Victorian funeral. It was, she would have loved it. She would have loved it. And so I put the clip on the day before her funeral. The day after her funeral service, I woke up, and Richard M. sitting in his chair, and he says, Baby, you know that little clip you put on of your mom? And I said, Yeah. And he said, I think it might be going viral. And I said, What? <laughs> and he said, Yeah, there's... 35,000 views. And I said, well, is that viral? <laughs> I, I have no idea. 
I barely know how to even get on social media. So I don't know all the facts about it. He said, well, I'm not sure if it's, if it's viral or not, but that's a lot of views. And I said, that's amazing. When he said that, I had not thought of this in 60 years or more plus. That little girl standing in the hallway listening to her mother in deep travail and then coming out and telling me what the word of God had been to her. That the word of God had come to her and what the word had been spoken to her. Immediately I remembered and Nanny, he said, I'm going to minister and I'm going to sing to thousands and I just was shocked. Yes, clap to the Lord. Because miracles may not look like miracles at the moment. You may wait a bit on the miracle, but let me just tell you, if you will step out and declare what God has spoken into your spirit. If you will have the courage to say, I believe that God has put this word in my spirit. And as he, as Mary said in Luke, I believe there will be a performance of the word of God. I believe if God speaks to us, He's going to bring it to pass. And honestly, when I was, I was just kind of in awe and I thought about Elisha, that he was promised a double portion. And when he died, he had not seen the fulfillment of that promise. But remember when the enemy was coming across, they were coming towards Israel and they were, they were worried and they put one of their own inside of an open sepulcher. Didn't know it, but that sepulcher held the bones of Elisha. And when that old dead guy hit those bones, that body came out of the grave. And that miracle, the second, hallelujah, that double portion was fulfilled. And I, am, I want to tell you today, I, I feel this so deep in my spirit. And I was so thankful when he told me what he was going to speak this second service because this is a divine appointment right now for this group that is in this building. I'm going to tell you that God has spoken things into your spirit. And you have said, you have looked into the face of God and you have said, is this really you, God? Is this you? Can I write this down on tablet? Is this going to be fulfilled? I'm telling you that God is going to bring it to pass. You need to stand on the promises of God. You need to declare his word. You can take it to the bank. You can cash the check. I, I want to give a witness to you today. Remember, mother told me I will speak to thousands. At the last time I looked at that little clip that I put on our Richard and Nancy Granquist, you can go there and look at it yourself. The last time I looked at that clip, there were 7,900,000 views. I said 7,900,000 over 500,000 comments in every language in the world. People are talking about this little tiny 91 year, 90 pound grandmother that is singing her way into glory. I'm telling you my family, if God has spoken a promise into your life, you better hold on to it. You better believe it. Because it's coming. Your miracle is coming. You need to get up in the morning and say, yes, I declare it. I believe it. So shall it be as unto me as you have spoken. Clap your hands to the Lord. Satabakota. Halabaka. The world around us wants to 
shatter our faith wants to depress our faith that's the world that we live in but we are not of this world we are the imago day we are the very image of god and he has put his glory in us we have the glory of god in us we are living in the righteousness of the word of god clap your hand to the lord Hallelujah. Here's what I'm feeling. This, the Holy Ghost is speaking to my spirit. Is this all right, beloved? Is this all right? Musicians, people, singers, everybody, stand. Everyone stand, please, with me. If you have someone in your life that desperately needs a miracle, maybe it's you, and you have felt like, well, God, you got so much going on up there. I really hate to bother you with this. No. The smallest, the smallest detail of your life. God, he said he cares about the baby sparrow. And, and he dresses the lily in beauty. And he dresses you in his love and his beauty today. And if you have a need, I'm just telling you right now, God needs for you to remind him of the promise that you have spoken into your heart. And so all the leaders of this powerful uh, 52 nation church, all of you leaders that are part of this movement, would you come to the front? All of you leaders, I'm not sure how to say that pastor, is that good? All of you leaders, would you please come stand right here in the front? All of you powerful leaders of this Pentecost of, of Sydney, this community, and I know that not all of you because the other service was huge and packed. Would you, would you turn and face your family and this beautiful community? Now today what we're going to do, this is from the Holy Ghost. This is not in our script, okay? But if you have known a promise of God, mother waited over 60 years she didn't even live to see it, just as Elisha did not live. But honestly, Sister Robin Harvey, bless you. I love you. You're so beautiful. I believe your sister is in that mighty cloud of witnesses this morning. I believe that. Over her children, grandchildren. But I believe that there are witnesses that are looking down this morning in your life and they are aware of promises that you have known that were spoken and they're saying, yes, yes, you will receive it. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't get weary. God is bringing that. And today, if that is you, God has spoken something to you, but you need the courage to keep believing or to receive this promise. I want you to come and stand in front of these amazing, powerful leaders. These are anointed by God. Yes, come as couples, come as a family. They're coming from all over the building. Thank you for your obedience to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, that's right. It might be for a loved one that is very ill today. It may be for a financial wreckage in your life. It might be for a crippled relationship that looks impossible, but he specializes, God specializes in those things today. Would you come? Thank you. Would everyone just press in as much as possible, press in. They're coming from all over this beautiful host of believers. As you're stepping into the aisle and tears streaming down your face because your heart is desperate to see that miracle, God sees. I want you to lift your faith like you never have before. I, I want to let, I want you to let your faith escape from wherever it's been, wherever you've held it. I want you to let it fly into the face of God right now. I want your faith, release it right now because God is going to refresh and restore and he is going to give you what you need to see that miracle. 
I don't know when and I don't know how. I just know that the Holy Ghost wants me to encourage you in great faith today. I know you've been disappointed. I know that maybe there have been times when you felt like you faltered to believe. But today, God wants to restore your faith in His promises. They are true. Right now, all over the house, I want you to lift your voice and I want you to bless His name. Bless His name and worship Him for the miracle that is coming to your life. Can you do that? Just lift up your worship Him. Jesus, I trust you. Just as my mother, for over 60 plus years, she trusted you even when my father did not serve you. And she was in deep abuse at his voice. She trusted you, God, that you would save his soul. And you did. You prayed for my brother and God saved his soul. And just as you believed that God had spoken a miracle that you would minister to thousands, we did not know there would ever be a Facebook, but God knew that there would. And God allowed the floodgates of heaven for my mother to sing to thousands all over the world about the faithfulness of God. I'm telling you, His promises are true, yes and amen. And if you will worship God with me today and say, do the work, Lord, that's right. Jesus, just say his name, will you? Just say his name. Jesus, we trust in you, oh God. There's no one else for us to look to as Jehoshaphat said, our eyes are upon you. We trust you, almighty God. We know that you are able when it doesn't look like anything is going to be right again. You are the God of every circumstance and situation. And right now we declare, oh God, our hope and trust in you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's a breaking in the spirit. There is a ramping. There's a breaking. Press through, press through. Press in. Oh God. 